Hey guys, welcome to my Sublist. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this boyfriend cardigan from Love Notions, that's the pattern company. I love their patterns, they have really, really great women's patterns, um, lots of different options, and they do a really good job with their patterns. And this, actually what I'm wearing is one of the options of the boyfriend cardigan. This is the hooded option. And then it's thigh length. Um, they also have like the duster length and then you could obviously crop it. And then I have the oversized pockets. I love that they're like a little sloped. I think that really gives that boyfriend fill to it. And then I just made an extra large so it's a little looser on me. And yeah, I just love how it turned out. I think it's super cute. So I'm excited to make another one with you guys today. Um, you're gonna need that pattern and then fabric. I'm gonna be using this Darling Daisy fabric. Um, and I'll put links down below for where I got fabric and for the pattern as well. And then I'm also going to be using my Baby Lock Brilliant, which is this machine right here. This is a amazing uh, machine for anyone who loves to sew and wants to be able to sew their own wardrobe or really anything you wanna sew, this is a great machine. I use it for like putting quilts together. I don't do quilting, I send that out, but I love it for really all of my everyday, any kind of sewing. It's just an all around awesome machine um, and has all the features that I could possibly need. So I'll put a link down below, make sure you go and check that out. And then other than those things, you're gonna need all of your basic sewing supplies. I am going to be using uh, some fusible tape, um, which just helps hold things in place before you sew it. And then you can either have it wash away or it can stay. I mean, it's not gonna be seen. Um, I believe this one's a wash away. I actually don't even know because the packaging I threw away, but I know it's gonna help hold those things in place like the pockets and the binding, especially because this is a knit project this is a great thing to have. I'll put a link down below for that as well. Um, but other than that, you just need all your basic sewing supplies. So let's get started. For our first step, we're going to be preparing our pocket. And to do that, I'm gonna take one of my pocket pieces and this is the top side of my pocket. I'm gonna fold that down an inch. And with this fabric, I definitely need um, to do a light iron on it to get it to stay because it's just a little bit thicker. Um, with this um, camo fabric, it wasn't bad and I could just fold it and it was fine. So I didn't need to iron. So depending on what type of fabric you're using, you might need to iron it, you might not. But I'm just gonna get that ready and I'm gonna pin it and I'm gonna pin it as well, just so we can take that over and stitch this edge down. When I come over to sew it, I'm gonna be sewing down um, each edge and just over that fold that we just did. So I'm gonna go in and my seam allowance is gonna be 3 8 of an inch. I'm gonna start at the top and stitch a little bit and then I'll back stitch and then keep stitching. And then once I get down to that fold, I'll back stitch, stitch past it once and then cut my threads. And then I can go to the other side. Oh, that one's really long. <laughs> And I'll do it this way. That way I can make sure my seam allowance is the same. Again, 3 eighths of an inch and back stitch at the beginning and the end. With that sewn, you can't even really see it on this fabric, but I'm just gonna flip that edge over so that all you see is that right side now. So that's what it's gonna look like. And then I can go over to this side and you'll see how it looks just really nice like that. And I am going to iron this down so it lays nice and flat for our next step. One thing that I'll probably need to do with this fabric is finish off all these raw edges um, with something like a serger or um, a French seam or some kind of special seam. A lot of, mine's, a lot of mine I'll probably use a French seam to finish it off, but for this I'll, I might just go serge it real quick just to finish off those edges, um, just so it doesn't fray, enough, fray too much. So I'll just do that for these three sides. For right now, I think that one's fine. 
um, I'm now going to do the top stitch across and I think that'll finish it off okay so that the fraying's not too bad. And you're gonna top stitch just under an inch because you're just wanting to catch that edge. I'll just start on the edge. I would like to do a little back stitch, especially on this fabric, it's not seen very much, so it's gonna be just fine. And kind of tuck that seam under, make sure it's not seen. And then there I have that top edge finished. You can see that's how it looks. So maybe I should just trim that real quick. Um, and now I am gonna serge these edges. Whoops. <laughs> I'll serge these three raw edges that I still have. And then I'm gonna take it over to my iron and fold them in about 3 eighths of an inch all the way around just like this and get them ironed in so that we can get our pocket stitched on. So once I have those sides ironed, now is when I'm going to be using my Wash Away Wonder Tape um, or whatever brand you have. So I just am going to measure however much I need for each side, which should be equal. So I'll cut two of those and then one for the bottom and iron those on. Once your pocket's ready, I'm going to take my front piece and on your pattern there are placement points that you can match them with. This is my left side so I have to flip it over, but I just take it and if I haven't marked it yet, which I'm really bad at marking them, so I tend to do it this way most of the time, but I line it up, line my pattern up because I haven't done anything with that front piece yet. And then I fold it right along my marks. So I already have it folded from the first time I used it. And then I just line this top up with it. And then I can pin it in place. And the interesting thing with this pocket is, see how it's slanted edges like that? Well, we're gonna line them up so that they're actually straight down, up and down. And so it gives a kind of slouchy pocket look to this piece. So mine line up right about here and right about here. So I'm gonna line that up, take that away. And I still pin mine in place just a little bit, just so there's no worry of like shifting. This one's a little thick, so I don't know if I actually should. But I'm doing this on my ironing board because then I don't have to worry about moving it and anything shifting. And really, once I have the general placement of where the pocket should go, I'm okay with it shifting a little bit. I just wanna make sure that this is straight up and down on this side and then straight up and down on this side. So it looks about right. Okay, so I'll just pin that in a few places. And then the nice thing with that Wonder Tape is then I can just iron all the edges and it will stick it to the front so that way when I move to the or er, to the sewing machine I don't have to worry about it shifting and that is the great thing about this wonder tape so once I feel like I have it situated kind of looks a little lumpy on camera but you just kind of can play with a little bit and like that's the point of the boyfriend cardigan is a little slouchy, a little oversized. I just really like that look and feel. I think it's perfect for fall and winter. Just comfort. Reminds me of comfort. So I'll just iron those edges down so that I can take it over and sew it. And one thing that you can do if you're having a problem with this, have thicker fabric, kind of like this one, is you can take your iron and kind of butt up next to it. See how it's kind of sticking out there? I don't love that, but that's from sewing that top stitching. 
So I'm just kind of pushing it over and then ironing it down. Just give it a little nudge and the iron kind of nudges that <laughs> into place, if that makes sense. So now I can take it over to my sewing machine. Now I'm just gonna stitch around the three sides of the pocket. Don't stitch the pocket closed. That can get kind of confusing. So make sure you know that side stays open. And I, you can do a little triangle up here. I'm not going to, mostly out of laziness, but I am gonna back stitch a couple times just to secure that edge. Once you have both of your pockets done, we're then gonna set those pieces, those front pieces off to the side, and then we're gonna take our back pieces and there should be two pieces that are mirror images and I'm gonna take these off and we are going to sew them together. Now, like I said earlier, I'm gonna be doing um, a French seam so that it encases my seam and then you won't see any stitching. Well, you'll see, you won't see any selvage edges. You won't see this edge so you won't have any fraying. Um, I really like doing this on clothes lately. It just makes it look really professional and really nice. So to do that, if you want to do this, you can. If not, you could serge them together. You could do a zigzag stitch. Um, you could do a straight stitch, whatever you prefer. But I'm going to leave my pieces wrong sides together, actually which is the opposite of what you would do if you're just doing like a serger stitch, then you would put them right sides together and then just do a stitch down the center of the back and call it good. For this, we're gonna stitch with them wrong sides together. So just like this, I'll do the stitch. In my stitch, I'm gonna do at a quarter of an inch and then I'll come back and show you the next step. After you've got that seam sewn, then we're gonna trim it down to about an eighth of an inch. Make sure you aren't cutting your actual stitching, but you do wanna trim it. You don't wanna miss this step, um, cause I have in the past, and then I end up seeing parts of that seam, like the raw edge on the other side. So I think this is an important step that might not seem important, but it is. Once you have that trimmed, you're then gonna open it up and fold it so it is right sides together. If you need to, especially if you're using like a stiffer fabric, um, you might wanna iron this. You can iron it open and then fold it on top of each other. I'm probably gonna iron this just to make sure it lays nice because then we're gonna take it over to our sewing machine and stitch about at a quarter of an inch again and stitch to encase this raw edge and that will be our seam finish right there. So I'll probably iron that just to be safe so it lays a little bit nicer for the sewing. After that is sewn, you can open it up. It should look like this. So we just have our regular seam in the center back and on the inside it's encased and there's no like raw edge. So no fraying will happen. So now I'm gonna take it over to my ironing board and I can just press that seam to one side so that it just lays nice and flat. Our next step is going to be finishing our shoulder seams. So I'm gonna take our front pieces and I'm gonna do the same exact seam. So I'm gonna do that French seam. So I'm gonna be laying mine wrong sides together. Again, if you're not doing a French seam, if you're just doing like a zigzag stitch or a serger stitch, you're gonna do it um, with the right sides together, just like you would normally stitch something. So make sure that doesn't confuse you. Um, I just really like the finish of this one. So I am gonna put just a couple pins in this, doing it wrong sides together, and then trimming it, and then flipping it over, and sewing it right sides together. With our shoulder seams finished, we're then going to attach our sleeves. 
So make sure you have those markings finished at the top. You should have um, a double notch section right here and then the single notch right here. So our single notch is gonna line up with our shoulder seam and then the double notch is gonna line up with the back. And for this one, I am just gonna use my serger because you won't really see that shoulder seam when you're wearing it. Um, and it's a little bit harder to do that French seam in the round like this. So I'm just gonna do it this way. I think I got the wrong piece. Let's make sure. It's so hard to tell. Okay, there's my double notch. So I'm gonna make sure I have the right piece by matching the double notch up, right sides together this time. And then that single notch, again, is going to go with your shoulder seam. So I'm gonna pin those in place. And then I like to pin right at the end those together so I know how far I'm going. And if there needs to be any easing in of the sleeve, I know exactly how much I have to go. So I'll do that on both sides and then I'll do the other one so that way I can just go to the sewing machine and do them both at the same time and not get up and down. <laughs> so there, there it's pinned, right sides together. I'm gonna go serge it on. Once you have your sleeve sewn on, you're just gonna have this giant piece of fabric. Here's my back, here's my two front panels, and then here are my sleeves, one and two over here. So I'm gonna take mine, and mine is a looser weave. You can see like it's gonna fray a lot. If I rub up against this a ton, it's just gonna be a big mess. Or if I wash it um, without doing this, <laughs> it'll be a big mess. So I'm gonna go around and I'm going to serge all the raw edges that are on this right now, <laughs> on this huge piece. So I am gonna like start here, serge all the way down to the bottom, and then right here, I am gonna like serge and then cut across and serge. Make sure you don't cut that off. We need this to do our vents. I can show you on this one right here, like this. So we want that, we want it to lay nicely like that, so we need this part so don't cut it off don't go straight down unless you don't want to bend I guess <laughs> then you could just sew it together but make sure you serge that so I'm just gonna finish off this is just doing another seam finish um, so that it all looks nice it all lasts a long time and holds up really well after you have all your edges surged or finished in whatever way you want we're then going to hem our sleeves um, this is going to be a lot easier now, especially have you, if you have a thicker weave of a fabric. Um, I just feel like it's easier to do it now than it is later, so I'm going to do it now too. I'm just going to take it first and fold it over an inch. And then iron that in place. If you want to, you can pin it as well. If your fabric is a little stubborn and getting ironed, <laughs> kind of like mine is. So I'm going to iron both sleeves and then I'll just top stitch that down on this side. Once those sleeves are hemmed, next we're going to fold it so that our right sides matches right sides match up and we're going to stitch our side seams and you're just going to stitch to the dot or star I believe it is on the pattern piece. So I just have them marked with pins on both pieces so we're just stitching to that point now we're ready to finish off our vents which are just right here on our side seams and so first what you're gonna do is you're going to press them to the wrong side so this is the wrong side of my fabric these just fold in I press this seam open you want to press it really good so that you get that crease right in there because next we're gonna take it and open it up and we want to see that crease my fabrics really hard to see the crease but you can kind of see it right there. And then we're gonna fold up the hem, which is an inch. So I can measure that and fold it up. So we're about right there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it over to your sewing machine and stitch right on the crease of this fold right here. So that's why you wanna see it really well or know where it is really well. If you need to mark it, that's totally fine. You can also pin this in place. But then I'm just gonna go over to my machine and backstitch at the top and the bottom 
And so that one inch right there on this piece, on this piece, and then on the other two um, vent pieces. So on all your vent pieces, and that's just gonna create this nice folded corner and this really straight corner, cornered edge right there. So it'll look really nice when it's all finished. With all the vents sewn, I'm then gonna take it, fold it back over so it's gonna lay nicely like that. And then I'll go around and iron my hem up all the way around um, an inch. And this is a good point if you want to use the fusible like wonder tape, you can use that. So I have mine ironed along my hem in some spots. So I'll just fold that up an inch and then iron that in place and get it ready to be sewn into place next. Once you have the hem pinned all the way around and the vents, then you're just gonna take it and on the right side, you're just gonna start stitching. I'm gonna do a back stitch at the beginning and the end and I'm just feeling along and stitching right on the edge of that folded hem so it holds it in place. And then we're gonna come up to our vent and make sure that gets stitched down really nicely. So I'll come right to that corner. I'm gonna make sure everything's still tucked in and catching nicely. Maybe do it a couple more stitches. And then with my needle down, I'm just gonna pivot and turn so that it can go up the vent on one side. And again, just kind of feeling along and stitching that down. Let me lay this out a little flatter. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna stitch up and right to that edge of what I can feel. And then I'm gonna leave my needle down again and pivot so then I can go across. So it's like just above where the opening is. And put my presser foot down, stitch across, and go to the edge of that side, and then pivot again to go back down. And then I will just continue to do that for the hem um, and for the vents on the other side. And at this point, I just wanna make sure everything's tucked in nicely and in the right position. And then pivot again and continue going down. So for this next step, it might be a little different if you are doing a different version. I'm just gonna do um, the folded edge, regular size, not like any different sizing on it. Um, and there's not gonna be any hood. So if you're doing a different version, you're gonna to need to do it a little bit differently, but for my version, this is how we're gonna do it. And the shawl version is very similar. Um, you're just gonna line up and match up the larger ends right here, like I'm gonna do. Um, you're just doing that with the larger ends and then we'll follow the same steps. So I'm gonna line up these short ends right here and serge those together. Um, I might do a straight stitch just to secure it as well, but then we will take it over to our iron after that. And once that seam is sewn, you're gonna take your piece and we're gonna do it right sides together first and stitch at three eighths of an inch these short edges, stitch those together. So that way once they're stitched, we can flip them out and those raw edges will be hidden for us to put the band on. So I'm gonna take both ends, right sides together, and stitch right along the end at 3 8 of an inch. Then with both of those ends sewn, we can flip it right sides out. And if you need to, get a point turner for that corner right there. And then we're gonna iron it so your wrong sides are together, just like that. For a final step, we just have to add that band or whatever you're creating on to the sweater. And I'm gonna try and do a French seam on this. I think it'll look nicer on this one. I didn't and I just left it like this, but I think I'm gonna go back and serge all of these layers. I just don't like how they're sticking out like that. So I'm hoping if I do a French seam, I can get that to look really nice. So I'm gonna do it 
um, with the wrong sides together, just like I did before, stitch that and then trim it and then flip it over and stitch it the wrong, the right sides together. So first I'm gonna pin it wrong sides together. If you're just surging yours together, your band, um, you wanna make sure this lines up at the bottom and then the center seam lines up with the back center seam and you just stitch those with them right sides together and that will finish that off for you if you're not doing um, the French seam. So, but I'm gonna try this real quick and see how it goes. I wanted to show you guys a quick close up of what that French seam looks like. So here it is on the wrong side. And what I did actually is I, after doing that French seam, I went and did a top stitch down the side of it to hold it in place because it's really bulky. And I just did it on this, on both of these front panels. I didn't go up around the neck because it was almost too bulky and I didn't really want to break a, break a needle. So, um, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I think like if you see it on the wrong side now, on the inside, it won't like look all strange. And I just love how everything is finished on the inside. So I'm really happy with the, how that French seam looks. And then once you have that seam done, you are all done with your boyfriend cardigan, boyfriend sweater, whatever you want to call it. Um, I really love how this turned out. I'm really excited to try it on. I'll try it on right now. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, and yours turned out just as fun and cute. It'll be perfect for fall and winter and spring, <laughs> all the seasons. So I, yeah, I am so excited about it. And I loved doing that French seam on it. So it just looks really nice and lays up here really nice as well. So thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section and then make sure to check out the Baby Lock Brilliant. I'll put all the links down for that below and I will put links for all the videos that I have done with that machine as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you next time. Bye.